So thank you to be here. I think it's the first time I see such a cozy place to, to do a talk. So I hope you're really well seated there, except at the back. There's, there's some spots in the couch, too. So, um, so very serious topic, right? Uh, zero trust. I think it was uh, f since this morning, we only heard, heard about it, security and zero trust. I think it's really important. Um, and obviously, we need a KMS for that, because otherwise, uh, where to put the secrets, right? Um, so that's, that's the topic of the, the, the talk. Um, who am I? Well, Ram, nice to meet you. I've been introduced. I'm working at Red Hat. Um, I was joking just before, because what I'm going to present you is at, at, it's, not, it's not supported at all with OpenShift. So if, if you are OpenShift users uh, and you want to use that, I'm really sad to say that it's not going to work. Uh, so I welcome you to use any other flavor of Kubernetes that is going to work on this. And uh, I can tell you that I'm working uh, deeply internally to make this happen. Uh, my um, uh, GitHub handle is rovandup. Um, you can search also on Google for Romdalf. Um, if you want to discuss about that, just, just uh, come after. I have uh, a good reason for the Romdalf part. Uh, so the topic, uh, the main th topic around here, it's actually the, the zero trust, how to achieve that model. Um, the first question I would, I would assume that you have is, why should I care? And if you are asking yourself that question, uh, then uh, you were not present this morning when uh, there was in this room there a discussion about the $10 uh, trillion dollars of a cyber hack. Uh, happening, uh, or at least that will cost uh, 10, 000, 10 trillion costs uh, from damages by 2025. So I think we, we want to avoid this. Uh, so the talk is about three things. We discuss about Kubernetes. Why do we care about Kubernetes? Because obviously everyone is using it today, right? Um, unless you're using Nomad and you're good because everything is integrated. So, uh, but still, a lot of people are still uh, around Kubernetes. Um, Kubernetes is fantastic, but is not really great with sensitive data. Uh, the reason why is because everything is saved into ETCD, and ETCD doesn't really come with any encryption or uh, ability to protect the data uh, in, in, the, in the key value store. So the only thing that we do to ensure that we can write uh, everything in ETCD is to do a base64 encoding. Base64 encoding is not, yeah, it's not safe. So don't do that. It's not enough. Um, the second thing that we want to uh, have in every environment today is zero trust. How do we define zero trust? Really easy. Single source for everything. So authentication, uh, credential, token, uh, certificates. Then we want to have authentication uh, itself. And, when, we, and I, uh, when we say authentication, it's not only about uh, Bob who wants to access a website or a database. It's about the platform itself that needs to authenticate to uh, that single source of, uh, uh, tr uh, of truth, uh, the application itself, and, and also time to time the users. And we want everything to be uh, controlled with policies access control list, depending what, what is the actual uh, uh, software that you're using uh, or framework. And the last, which is really important if you have uh, regulation and compliance within your environment, is uh, auditing. You need to be able to, to track what happened on your environment, right? So the last bit that we need for this is a KMS. Vault, and I'm. I did just a, a copy-paste of uh, the website, so I can tell you I, I didn't put much effort here. Um, the, if you go on the Vault uh, website, you will see that Vault is there to manage secrets and protect sensitive data. So far, we are fully aligned with everything there. So we're done, right? I can uh, pack my laptop, and we are all good. We have the zero trust model, and Kubernetes is safe. And uh, oh, actually, no, it's not true. We're missing something. What do, we, what do we miss, actually? Well, I need to revert back a bit on the uh, actual uh, usage uh, of Kubernetes in terms of secrets and config map. I'm taking those two examples because usually that, those are the ones with sensitive data. So if you want to deploy this uh, on your Kubernetes cluster 
And if you need any help drawing uh, any diagrams, you can ask me. I'm doing that for free, so you can see. Um, and so basically, you apply your manifest here. The Cube uh, API will pick them up and will store them automatically in etcd. There's no magic here. And the result, if we, um, oh yeah, sorry. There's also other component, like if you have a storage, uh, cloud-native storage, or if you have like, um, uh, let's say, a CNI that is uh, deployed, a specific CNI do, that you want to deploy, most likely there's secrets associated to it because you have also API access and so on. So those will need also to have a secret uh, registered in etcd, and they will follow the same path. Uh, same for an application. If the application wants to have access to those secrets or config map, they will go through the Kube API and they will go in etcd and get those. At the end of the day, if we do a dump of the etcd, that's what you will have. Um, and I'm sorry for the quality of the, the, the screenshot here. So what we have here is basically the uh, registry where the secret is. Uh, you might have also the concept of namespace here. It's a default namespace. And then you have the name of the secret, which is basically a secret, a secret that has been applied before uh, having the KMS plugin in place. So, and as you can see in red here, this is actually your data. If it was credential, that would be plain text. Cool. Everybody can have access to your database now. Um, if we were to use Vault uh, without any KMS pro uh, pl plugin provider, you would solve uh, a lot of different um, uh, hassle, especially when it comes to the application. Uh, the application can fetch the uh, credential for any services, tokens, uh, um, certificate from Vault, and you will have um, something very secure. But for everything else that is underlying components of uh, Kubernetes, you still don't have that capabilities. It's still plain text. So if we go again and we'll look at it, it's going to be plain text again. So why do we care? And why do we want to use a KMS pro plugin provider for Kubernetes? Actually, if you go on the Kubernetes.io website, and you look for secrets, the first thing that you will see is the thing here on the left, saying that you need to use encryption at rest. And if you click on that link, you will have that uh, table on the right showing you all the different uh, options, I would say, to do uh, the encryption at rest. And the only one which is fitted for um, the uh, production environment is the KMS. So you need to leverage uh, a, 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 a solution like Vault to do that. But we are missing that glue in the middle to make this happen. So, really proud to discuss about Trusso. Trusso, key ring in English, um, is a project that I'm maintaining. I started that in 2019 with FOSDEM. Who knows FOSDEM? Wow, cool. That's good. Thank you. So I started there um, with a bunch of people. We discussed about the craziness of secrets, and we, we, we started Vault. Uh, today, we had the chance to, uh, up to today, we had the chance to discuss with AshiCorp Engineering. We presented to IDC. We uh, took the project and we applied to the CNCF sandbox. It's used in production uh, with uh, SUSE uh, and uh, RKE2. I should hide my badge, sorry, right ahead. I just should not do that. Uh, and uh, everybody's happy about it. So, how does it work? It's quite easy. It's a tiny piece of software. It's written in Golang. It's a tiny piece of software that just, just sits next to your API manager in Kubernetes. And the way we, it, it works is basically when you, you keep everything you're doing normally, you just, you know, kubectl or kubecuddle, depending on uh, where you come from and how you, you like it, uh, and you apply your manifest on uh, your Kubernetes cluster with secrets of config uh, map, just keep that. You don't need new tooling, new solution, or whatever. Um, it's just going to go through the API uh, uh, manager of Kub uh, Kubernetes. And Q the, the API manager would say, oh, this is something that I need to care about. This is sensitive data. So I'm going to send that to my Q uh, K uh, KMS plugin, uh, because I know that this little piece of uh, software will be able to help me. And what will happen is that the KMS plugin will start discussing with Vault. Who knows Transit Engine uh, from Vault? Two person, three person, four person. OK, All right. that's fantastic. The, so the Transit Engine in Vault is a way to do um, encryption as a service. So basically, you don't need to register anything in Vault. You ask Vault to uh, take a payload, encrypt the payload, and send it back. 
That's it. Pretty, pretty nifty. So everything stay in the Kubernetes cluster also. So um, when the KMS plugin send that to Vault, the payload is, com uh, is coming back encrypted and will register that in ETCD. And that's why, you know, color is really important. Before it was red, now it's green. ETCD is really happy. And if you look at the uh, different um, uh, uh, output here from uh, the dump, the ETCD dump, you would see uh, a couple of new things that happen. So the, the, the part where, where we have the namespace and stuff, it's still the same. Uh, the second part is that we see now that we have a header saying it's encrypted. We're using the KMS provider uh, framework from Kubernetes. It's native, so you don't need anything else. And uh, after that, you have the Vault provider, which is actually true. So um, if you are using another Vol, uh, uh, provider KMS, you would have something else. Here we're using Vault, so that's the, the one that will show up. And then you see the, the version of the API that we're using. And then after, nothing. It's a payload, a fully encrypted payload. So we're good to go. So Kubernetes, happy. KMS, happy. But how do we ensure the zero trust? Well, first of all, we have Vault. So that's our single point of uh, entry for everything. Uh, the second part is we need to take the two stacks. We have Vault and we have uh, the Kubernetes part. So the first thing we're going to do, we're going to create a service account. The service account will be linked with uh, some RBAC rules, obviously, because we want to limit the blast radius of that service account in terms of access on the Kubernetes um, um, resources. And we'll register that in Vault. That allows the platform part to authenticate. That's the first part. Then we're going to enable the transit engine uh, key, so the encryption of the service. And we'll as associate token and policy with that. So we are restricting who can have access to what with the policies and the token. So basically, only the actual KMS plugin will have access to it. And then we'll put that into the actual uh, key value store dedicated to uh, the KMS plugin uh, in question, and we'll have a, a policy. The reason why we do that is because we need to have, uh, for real zero trust uh, uh, security model, we'll have the platform authenticating, then we'll have the specific access to the, tra the, uh, the, the transit engine that will be also authenticating with uh, the token. We will have the application authenticating also, and everything is under policies. So we are fitting all the bill here. Well, one more thing. We want to reduce, again, the blast radius. So we'll do a roll bound on the actual authentication for the overall here to the namespace and the application. So we are really restricting the access to only Truso and the API manager. At that stage, when we start the uh, KMS plugin Truso, uh, we will have an init container that will start get the, via Vault agent the configuration file with the information about the transit engine endpoint and the token. And we will get that into uh, Truso so that it can start sending all the requests from the API uh, manager to the transit uh, key. So at that stage, we fit that zero trust approach. So meaning that Kubernetes is fully secure from a sensitive data. We are using Vault as a single source uh, for everything. We authenticated every layers of the stack. We have policies associated to it. And we have also the ability to audit, because we have the logging system and we have the, the audit capabilities also from um, the, the Vault itself. There was an announcement also from a telemetry perspective for Vault agent. That's going to be something we will implement, so we have even more auditing capabilities. So what should I say more? Um, I, I would say it's open source. Uh, there's a link there. Just go. The wiki is fantastic. Uh, we work a lot there. And what's next, would say? OK. Um, what's next is the roadmap, obviously, because everything is a question of innovation and uh, uh, improving stuff. So we have a pretty good roadmap, solid roadmap, uh, with uh, our fully redesign of the solution, because we want to extend, actually, the lack of features or the lack of benefits uh, of using this solution with uh, Kubernetes. Kubernetes doesn't allow you, for example, to have more than one KMS. If we think about multi-cloud, hybrid cloud, it doesn't fit the bill. So we're going to work on this with the multi-KMS support that allows you, for example, to have uh, on-prem some secrets. And then if you want to move uh, your workload somewhere, uh, you will be able to get that uh, in any cloud. 
uh, you will have also the ability to migrate between KMS and backup. Who doesn't like backup? Another one. OK, that's cool. And obviously, uh, we are looking for contributors. So you are welcome to join, help. That would be fantastic. Thank you. Thank <laughs> you.